value of a healthy workforce is well known. It's good for people and the organisation. Promoting well-being can help reduce sickness and stress and create positive workplaces where people and businesses thrive. But how do you transform strategy statements to meaningful improvements for individuals? A strong component of NatWest Group's drive to be a purpose-led organisation is its integrated wellbeing strategy that cares for colleagues, customers and communities. Emily Wise is HR business partner, partner at NatWest Group and she joins us now. Welcome to Cybos TV, Emily. Hello, thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Wonderful, great to have you here. Um, okay, so being mentally and physically healthy brings a lot of benefits, and so it's important to take care of our mental and physical health. What does NatWest do to support the well-being and health of its staff overall? Yeah, so as you mentioned, we are a purpose-led organisation, and for us, having an integrated and established well-being strategy is absolutely integral to being purpose-led. And we... We structure our wellbeing strategy around four key pillars. So we focus on physical health, mental health, social health, and financial health. And having those four aspects of wellbeing integrated together allows us to be able to dial up our wellbeing approach based on individuals, um, whether they need additional support for their wellbeing. And I thought I might bring that to life for you a little bit. So um, the pandemic, for example, in reaction to the pandemic, we've done a couple of very specific things. So we've recently had our Go Challenge. Our Go Challenge was right across the organisation. We had 17,000 staff take part in it. And it was all about becoming more physically mobile. So people were spending a lot of time at their desks. And across those 17,000 staff, they walked 6.9 billion steps in nine weeks. And that was a total of 3.4 billion miles. So a huge amount of physical activity. And it really got the whole organisation working together. In addition to that, we've slightly amended our private medical insurance policies so that we can fast track both physio and mental health pathways for staff so that they're able to access those more easily. And then we've also launched 12,000 wellbeing ambassadors right the way across the bank. And there are colleagues who have been trained and upskilled on those four pillars of our mental um, physical, social and financial wellbeing strategies so that they can really point staff in the right directions. Mm. Now, Emily, in more recent years, the stigma around mental health has started to shift um, and there's much more of a positive focus mm. on achieving good mental health. Now, how, is it, how important is it for business to support its staff mental health and what are the benefits of doing so? Uh, it's absolutely imperative to support mental health. Um, as I said, our purpose is about helping people, family and businesses to thrive. And in order to do that, we need to support the well-being and the mental health of our colleagues. It starts with our colleagues. Many of you may know, but the statistics show that one in four people will suffer from mental health struggles at some point in their life. That's one in four. That's a huge amount of people. And that means that one in four of our colleagues will suffer from mental health. And if that's the case, our colleagues are unable to bring the best of themselves to work. And if they're unable to bring the best of themselves to work, they are unable to support our customers in the way that they would want to. So for us, it's absolutely imperative. Mm. And you mentioned supporting your colleagues there. What challenges has NatWest faced around supporting staff health and well-being during the pandemic? Many, <laughs> many, many challenges. So if I, if I think back to the beginning of the pandemic, we almost had to break our workforce into three different categories. We had our key workers, so for example, our branch staff that had to continue to go into branches to support our customers. And we had to make sure that our branches were COVID safe and that those staff and our customers were also safe. We then had a group of people that had to continue coming to the office because for their roles, they had to be office based. And again, we had to make sure, therefore, that our offices were COVID safe. And then we had our largest number of colleagues in, in numerical terms, and that was almost 40,000 staff that overnight had to begin working from home. So that was just absolutely huge for us. And, and as you can imagine, there are a number of challenges with that. Not least that actually 
home is not a safe place for everybody. You know, some people, that there may be issues with domestic violence. There were people that were suffering mental health challenges that felt very isolated at home. So although we took an approach whereby people could work from home, we took a work from home first approach for those colleagues. If we found through line management support that people were struggling with working from home or it was unsafe for them to do so, we did invite them back into the office, of course, in a COVID safe way to support that. In addition, um, we just had the very practical challenges of equipment. So 40,000 people, most of whom weren't used to working from home on a permanent or even on a regular basis. So we had to make sure that we were able to ship out desks, chairs, laptops, screens, you name it. It all had to be shipped out to various places across the country. So, yeah, real, real challenges. But I think we worked through them. We listened to staff and we took on board their feedback. Emily, thank you so much for joining us by Cyboss TV.